Alright, so are we uh, are we filming? Yeah. Alright, yeah. good. Alright, so here's what we're gonna do. Uh, a couple of quick things. A reminder, test is tomorrow. I realize some of you also have an apes test tomorrow. Yeah. Okay, you're gonna be just fine. You're, David just, David's like, holy. David, we have an apes test tomorrow. David, you have an apes test tomorrow. David, you have a cow test. David, that was a cow test. Nerds. Okay, yes. So, apes, and you have a calculus BC exam, and to make things even more challenging, we have a pep rally. Oh. Which means, which means your class periods are shorter than usual. <laughs> your test is not. Even Mr. Lincoln's gonna stress for us. I, I know. I forgot. <laughs> Me too. Talk to my first period about that. Yeah. Okay. So here's the thing. Get here as early as you can. The minute you walk in the room, you can start the test. So you're just gonna have the Do not skip your first period class. If all eleven of you are like, "Ooh, I gotta go potty. Can I? Can we go right now?" And then you magically show up here in the middle of first period, they're still gonna be testing. No. Oh. A bunch of us are in seminar. A bunch of maybe a little early. If you want to have that conversation with him, that is fine. That is fine. But you cannot get here in this room during first period. They will still be testing. But once that first period bell rings, it is fine for you to come in, get the stuff, sit down, get started. When the second period bell rings to say that's the end of your period, you done. You done. All right, so that's uh, that. We talked about quiz corrections. Carmen, your lunch will be here at the beginning of the lunch period. All right. The best thing. Uh, a couple of recommendations here. Recommendation number one, make sure you know every single derivative rule. All of them. Arc sine, arc cosine, arc tangent, tangent, secant, cosine, sine, all of them. The mother rule, oh my god. The chain rule, which involves a mother and her baby. The product rule, the, all the derivative rules. Now here's the thing, there is not going to be one single question on that test that says what is the product rule. There will not be one single question that says what is the chain rule. You're going to have to use all your derivative rules. This is really the thing. So don't be surprised if I give you a function and say, hey guys, this is the position function. I want the acceleration function. What would you do? Find the the You're going to find two derivatives, <laughs> right? I need you to know. I might ask you find the equation of a tangent line. Equation of a tangent line. You need a point. You need a slope. You're going to get the slope from the derivative. We know all these things, right? Mm -hmm. Knowing the derivatives, earning all the stickers that have been earned, is like level one entry kind of stuff. I'm gonna be hitting you like, can you apply these things? Do you know them? And I'm sure for the 11 of you, the answer is gonna be okay. You're gonna be fine. So here's what we're gonna do for the rest of the period. We are gonna we're gonna do some speed dating. Okay. Carmen's like, I would not date this one. <laughs> I understand. I understand. All right. Oh my gosh, look at what's happening. Oh, Steven is so off task and he's just like blazing a trail through all these other problems. Steven is ruining my activity. Thanks, Steven. So all of these problems. He's like, okay. We don't give me a demerit. Alright, so all of these problems that you see right here that Steven is already like working his way through. Um, came from the 2016 international exam. So if you had been a senior last year, like in May, in a foreign country, these would have been some of the derivative questions that you had to answer. Here's how speed dating is going to work. I'm going to give you one minute to work on the problem completely on your own. You're going to get as far as you can in this one minute. When that one minute is up, you are then going to talk to the person across from you. I don't want you to be like, do you have B? I have B. It must be B. I want you to talk about your process. Stop ruining my activity. Stop. <laughs> this is why we don't have nice things. Okay. 
Stop. Uh, Shut up, bro. Keep going. Uh, All right. <laughs> Stop. Everybody know how this is going to work? Yes. One minute complete Stop silence me. on your own. One minute talking. At that point, I'm going to share what the answer is. Or maybe Stephen will share what the answer is. <laughs> okay. For those of you that are like, done, I've got this, I also need you to have your problem set packet out. So if you could take your problem set packet out. Because what we're not going to do, you're not going to do more than one problem at a time on here because I want you to be seeing it with fresh eyes every time. In your problem set packet, towards the back, there's a bunch of multiple choice review questions starting on page 15, okay? Um, I will tell you, if you look at the top of page 15, though, oh, yeah, 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 I did, look at me. Um, level one questions are questions one and two, meaning these are easy questions, like these are too easy for you all. Level two and three are questions three through 20. Level four and five are questions 21 through 30. I would encourage you all to spend some time tonight when you're like, hey, I just need extra practice problems. 21 to 30 is where you want to spend your time. If you want to do problems in three through 20, that's okay. If you want to do one and two, that's okay. But you all in a VC environment need to be focusing on problems like 21 through 30. I'll send you the multiple choice solutions later on. <coughs> Everybody good? All right. One minute. Problem number four. Enjoy the ride. No talking during this first minute. talk to your partner, but that's the only person you're talking to. If you talk to anybody else, it's like flirting with somebody else on another date. <laughs> I got this that um I see that right? That's what you got and then right? I think that all and then this is right. this would be this negative x and then minus one plus x right so I took that out so it's one over x plus uh -huh. one square, right? And then after that, I, yeah, because uh, and then after that, I distributed as the these to these, right? All so right, here we go. X to the fourth, and X plus one to the fourth, right? And then since these are multiplying, and then the same, so then you just have the exponent. Can you give me? I got it. What? Oh my God! Please stop. Okay. All right. <laughs> if all went well for number four, what do we get? D. D. Okay, good. Did everybody get D? Yes. yes. All right. 
You didn't get D. That's fine. Okay, so here's what I want to do. I'm going to quickly go over this one for Polymone and anybody who got it wrong and who, like is too shy to say that you got it wrong, and for all the friends <laughs> at World Central and East End. What you all are doing is work with, with your current partner, work with, uh, work on these leveled questions. All right, so problem number one, Stephen or Lewis, can they see me on film? <coughs> All right, x over x plus 1 to the fifth polynomial, what did you try? So 5 to the x over x plus 1 to the fourth. 5 times x to the x plus 1 to the fourth power, and then did you stop there? No. Okay, what did you do then? I found the product row of x over x. Wait, the product row? Yeah. You mean quotient rule? Quotient rule? Oh. Yeah. All right. And I'm writing this DX notation to say I know I need to take the derivative, but I'm just not ready yet. Okay. So quotient rule polynomial. What does the quotient rule tell me to do? Uh, <laughs> low. So x plus 1 d high minus high d low. Low, low. Are you okay with that being the derivative? Right now, here's the problem, and part of why I wanted to highlight this problem is this answer doesn't show up there. So what's happening is they're messing you up with some simplification stuff. What legal algebra stuff can we do here, Paul? Distribute the five. Distribute the five? Well, first we need to find the first. First you want what? The two-fourth power. Okay, so if I distribute the fourth power, that means now x is being raised to the fourth power, and x plus one is being raised to the fourth power. Hopefully, there, your eye is getting drawn over here. There's some simplification to do. X plus one. X plus one. X plus one times one is just x plus one minus x. So that it's that's just one over x plus one squared. All right, finish it up. No, 16 over 9. 16 over 9. It's x plus 1 to the 6. x plus 1 to the 4th times x plus 1 squared. Add those exponents and then the numerator. And then 5x to the 4th. 5x to the 4th, which is y. D. Okay, for any of the friends watching at home, on free response, a safe stop is right here. There's no need to simplify on free response ever. But on multiple choice, this is an example of how they're hiding it by doing some algebra stuff. I got right, 17 over 16. Are all the friends okay with whatever they're working on? All right, time to rotate. I said it was speed <coughs> dating. In speed dating, you like you date somebody for a little bit for like five or ten minutes or so, and then you move on because maybe like I don't know the relationship between David and Carmen isn't destined for you know like marriage. All right, so Myra's team, you guys shift down one space closer to the camera. You stay where you are. This is Myra's team. Myra's team shifts down. Lewis, you shift up to the front. That's how it works. It was like many no. no. Like, let's meet never again. Right, okay, I agree. I have plans for all the things. Oh, oh I ship it. Did you show Brooke Marie? No. Alright. What? Show Brooke Marie. What? Number six. Uh, One and it starts right now. Six. I'm <laughs> 
is B for everybody else. We'll go back to the leveled questions. I want to look at these 2016 questions though again and again because these are the most recent derivative questions the College Board has put together. Okay, David. David, what were your thoughts when you read this question? Uh, chain rule. You thought chain rule. Yes. What, what, what even made you think chain rule? Uh, I don't see the word derivative anywhere. I say slope for the line. Ah. But they wrote slope of tangent line, and slope of tangent line, of course, means derivative. Good. So if y is the natural log of 1 minus x, I need the derivative. OK. So what's the derivative, David? Uh, it'll be 1 over 1 minus x. 1 over 1 minus x. <coughs> Times negative 1. Times negative 1. Hello. Okay, so but I want the slope of the tangent line at negative one. So now get me y prime of negative one. Now be careful. One over one minus negative one times negative one. One minus negative one. Oh, two. Oh. oh. So we've got one half times negative one. So negative half. All right. Okay. I got confused. Yeah. We should get, we should get this one. Yeah. All right. All right. Good, good, good. Um, yeah. Out of curiosity, how do you find the 20th derivative? How do you find the 20th derivative? What an interesting question that you would ask me. Why would you bother to ask me what the 20th derivative of something is? Why would they ask me? Why would they ask you might be a better question. All right. So what, what, Celeste, what part are we looking at? 23. 23. This is 23 in that problem set packet. What's the original function? Uh, y equals sine of 2x. Y equals sine of 2x. And what they want is y20, the 20th derivative. Now you have some options here. You could find 20 derivatives. That's too long. That can't possibly be the thing. There must be something else. Maybe there's a pattern that they're hoping you're going to discover. Maybe. So what's the first derivative? Cosine of 2x times 2. Second derivative. Negative sine. Right derivative of cosine, negative sine of 2x times 2 times another 2. This first 2 comes from chain rule. This 2 is the 2 from up here that you are multiplying by. Okay, take another derivative. Derivative of negative sine negative is negative cosine of 2x times 2 times 2 times 2 times 2. Times two. Times two. Okay. Maybe things are starting to come together. Take another derivative. Sine. Derivative of negative cosine is sine of 2x. Now let's be clever about this. Times 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 is really 2 to the Four. Look at where you started. Look at where you are. By the time you hit the fourth derivative, you're back to <coughs> sine 2x times 2 to the fourth. <coughs> Take another derivative. Cosine 2x times 2 to the fifth. Take another derivative. Negative sine of 2x times 2 to the sixth. Take another derivative. Negative cosine. Take another derivative. Sine. Sine of 2 to the x times 2 to the 8th. When's the next time you get back here? 12. At the 4th derivative, it's sine of 2x times 2 to the 4th. The 8th derivative, sine of 2x times 2 to the 8th. 12. 12th derivative, sine of 2x times 2 to the 12th. 12. When do I get back here again? 16. 16. Sine of 2x times 2 to the 16th. Then at 20. 20th derivative. Sine of 2x times 2 to the 20. If you want something that's really going to blow your mind, 
if you start with the sine of x and you take one derivative, cosine, another derivative, negative sine, another derivative, negative cosine, you get this like cyclic pattern. I was teaching in Pasadena a couple of years ago and I saw somebody wrote wrote, somebody, they, they speak that way, um, <laughs> in Pasadena, somebody wrote S, C, negative S, negative C, and I was terrified, number one, because I was in Pasadena, uh, <laughs> number two, because I thought it was like a gang sign of some sort, that and all these so calculus kids were like, S, C, negative S, negative C, and I'm like, eh, what does this mean? <laughs> Sine, cosine, negative sine, negative cosine. I messed up. I really thought it was like south side crypt killers. I was terrified. <laughs> <laughs> that's messed up. Oh. I'm just saying. That's messed up. Oh. I'm from Pasadena. That's messed up. You know. Yeah. All right. <laughs> no, I don't. <laughs> I never experienced that. I worked in Pasadena for 11 years. I love working in Pasadena. All right. Time to rotate. That's <laughs> Hey, remember that one time you knocked my contact out? No, no, I don't. Hey, what did you like? I've upgraded. Yeah, Louis was like, it's not you, it's me. And Celeste was like, yeah, it's you, you're right. All right, next problem, number 13. Good luck. <laughs> yeah. All the friends are here. One of these problems, if you know what you're doing, you're already done. How many guys are already done with this one? one. Okay. I hope everybody is okay. This tan negative one of x really means arctan. Arctan. Inverse tan. This is one of those notations. Tangent of x? 
the derivative of arctan is 1 over 1 plus x squared. So that's why, Lewis, it's going to have to be e. Okay? All right, time to rotate. Try number 25. Don't believe in yourself. Don't believe in yourself. You do it. That's all right, Celeste. It's not going to laugh on you. Yeah. All right, 25, one minute of silence begins right now. TBT? One minute of silence. Just because Carmen's doing it doesn't mean you should. It's okay to begin. <laughs> This is kind of what I thought was going to happen. A lot of you are looking at this and you're like, why is this even here? We've been studying derivatives. Why would this problem be here? Because this is a derivative. There are three derivative formulas that you guys need to know. One of them so knows the was this limit as x approaches a, f of x minus f of a over x minus a. The other one? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> if somebody could get that, it'd be great. f of x plus h minus f of x all over h. Stop. Oh. Okay. Uh, see? <laughs> it's that new operating system. No, limit it's the screen protector on the Okay, fine, do that one. <laughs> f of a plus h minus f of a all over h. These three are all fair game. They are all fair game. So let's do a little pattern matching here. Which one? The second one. I'm probably not going to pick the first one. Right? I know it's a limit as h approaches 0. Now, the second one is going to give you a function answer. It's going to give you like f prime of x. This guy here gives you f prime of a, gives you the derivative at a particular point. What you need to be able to do is identify first what's the function and then what's a. The form is f of a plus h minus f of a all over a. Oh, the function is e to the x. The function is e to the x. And a is negative. And a is negative one. Because then it has the form. It says f of a plus h minus f of a all over h. Actually, I disagree. Is it e to the negative x? Yeah, the function is actually e to the negative x. And a is positive 1. And if you're not sure about that, <coughs> actually try it in here. If f of x is e to the negative x, then f of a plus h is going to be e to the negative 1 plus h minus e to the negative 1 all over h. So this guy here means find the derivative of e to the negative x and then evaluate f1. So what is this? Negative e to the negative x? Plug in that x equals 1. So negative e to the negative one. So b. And for any of the calculus teachers that might be watching this, I think I solved this one wrong in the solutions. It should, it should definitely be b. B. Wait, why are we plugging in one and not zero? Why are we plugging in one and not zero? Because the form, the limit is h approaches zero, f of a plus h minus f of a over h. This tells you the derivative of the function at a at the number that you're plugging in, not the derivative of zero. Mrs. Blakely at East End likes to call these those hidden derivative questions. All right, time to rotate. We've got three more. I want to get you guys through all three. Oh, you're just much more. Oh, you're just like a monkey. What? All right. Go back. No, you said you read it. Right. 28. One minute. Don't make me set my timer.
Let's talk. I don't you get buddy. One over six. Yeah. 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 In between. Well, C. Yeah. Yeah. What are you doing? Sandy. Oh. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so you guys know you've got F, they were so kind. G is equal to F inverse of X for my friends that just memorized G prime of X is one over F prime of G of X. Right, we've just we've got this locked down. So F prime of x is 3x squared plus 2x plus 1. g of 3 is equal to 1. What's g prime of 3? So I know g of 3 is 1. <coughs> f prime of 1 should be 3 times 1 squared plus 2. That's Aaron back there, right? Yep. 6. So this should be 1 over 6. How many guys honestly have seen it? Nice, we've got this under control. There's not a lot of ways they can ask derivatives of inverse questions. Like, really, there's there's just not. You do need to just have it memorized, though, that g prime equals 1 over f prime of g of x. And in the event that they mix, mix up the variables on you, they don't call it f and g. It's like g and k. you got to be ready for that. Other than that, you guys are well prepared. All right, rotate. That's like a little <laughs> Yeah, this one was on the quiz, wasn't it? Yeah. All right, good. Then it's time to rotate to number 26. 26. Aaron, why don't you take this front seat over here so that you are not entertaining the friends from North Central and East End, although I'm sure they would be much entertained. You can join this group over here. You guys are on question 26. This question it was calculator active. I want to challenge you though to do this without your calculator. It's going to be some. David, you okay there? Yeah. Jam challenges. <laughs> All right. What? Yeah, we're on the very last <coughs> problem there. No, no, sir. Quadratic formula. Right. But for the people that were listening, my challenge to you is do this without the calculator. <laughs> To the ones that were easy. To the ones that were easy. <laughs> no, 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 26, but you're not going to use the calculator. You don't need <laughs> That's why I came over and told you especially. Celeste was just pretending to not listen. Well, um, I'm not But I will have all quizzes graded by the end of lunch if you want to stop by and pick it up. Before I got it right. Just saying. Can you have to find you? I know, <coughs> yes. I think you have to find you this one. And Steven, if you got it right the first time. Which through, number uh, equals yeah, that's I'm so three. happy for you. I'm so happy. <coughs> <coughs> right? Uh, that's what I was doing. We'll find out. Yeah, let's go back. So that's for number three. For number three? It's not zero. Yes, yeah, it's not zero. Twenty six. 
said that you can make you more. What you looking at? Focus! <laughs> Why don't you do that? Don't look at me! <laughs> Stay down! I am staying down. I think it's three. Is it three? One. Is it three? Alright, 26. They're using instantaneous rate of change. You guys know instantaneous rate of change. Another way to say instantaneous rate of change? Instantaneous rate of change is derivative. Right? Mm, tan, slope of tangent line. This just means f prime and Average rate of change? Average rate of change, you guys know by another word, double means slope. Just straight slope. <laughs> Instantaneous rate of change here is f prime. What is that? 3x squared minus 4x plus 5. Slope means f of 5 minus f of 0 over 5 minus 0. A little bit of a little bit of ugly math that you're gonna to have to do. <coughs> five cubes at one twenty-five minus fifty, that's seventy-five, <coughs> plus twenty-five is hundred. I think this is eighty-four. Mm -hmm. Minus f of zero is negative sixteen. That was my mistake. I kept saying eighty-four minus sixteen over five. So I get a hundred over five, which is twenty. This is a rock. This is your average rate of change. This is IROC, instantaneous rate of change. I want to know where these two things are going to be equal to each other. Right? So just put them together. 3x squared minus 4x plus 5 equals 20. Sad news, there's no more calculus to be done. That's all algebra 2. Algebra 1, actually, now in our curriculum. So 3x squared minus 4x minus 15 is equal to 0. You've got a factor. I'm curious, how many of you guys still like you do the mama diamond? Or you do like the little box and diamond method to factor? The box and diamonds. Where you look at like 3x squared and negative 15 and you say, oh, that's negative uh, 45x squared, negative 4x down here. What multiplies to negative 45x squared and add up to negative 4x? Oh, Xbox. The, the Xbox. Some people call it the mama diamond. Uh, what multiplies to negative 45x squared and adds up to negative 9, 4x? Negative 9. Five. Negative 9x and a positive 5x. And then you go over here and you do the box. And so it's 3x squared, negative 9x, plus 5x, minus 15. Factor out the 3x, factor out the 5, so 3x plus 5 times x minus 3. Stephen, the one thing I saw that you did, it looked like you had x plus 5 and x minus 9. Yes. Well, I mean, I, I ignored that, and then I just did a quadratic formula. Okay, all right, so that wasn't working. You did the quadratic formula. Nice job. Okay. What? What I thought you were doing is a technique called slip slide divide, which is so not the way that we factor. Anyway, negative 5 thirds and positive 3. Well, the derivative part was easy, right? Well, okay. Right. This guy's your, your I rock, your instantaneous rate of change. This guy over here is the A rock, the average rate of change. And so the question is, at what point are they equal to each other? And so I would make the equation out of that. Or you go the other option, which is plug in the answer choices. Yeah, and that works too. Are there any answer choices you get rid of right away? Zero. And 
because when I looked at the derivative and I, I did that first. Yeah. I did the right side first. Yeah. The arrow, and then I knew that zero wouldn't equal that. 20. Okay, so zero wasn't going to get you to 20. Five probably wasn't going to get you to 20. And ugh, why bother trying the fractions? Right, so I just tried the whole number. Then you get to three. Mm -hmm. That's fine. Everybody mostly okay? Okay. So that's as far as I wanted to go with those questions. Um, all of those questions came from the 2016 international exam, which is really exciting because there's 45 multiple choice questions, and we're only seven weeks, eight weeks into the course, and there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven out of the 45, just based on the work we've done in this unit, that you guys should all be able to do and do really well with. Okay? We're in a good place. Tonight for homework, study. There's nothing you're going to turn into me. There's nothing that you need to do. The smartest thing for you to do, work as many of these questions as you can. Okay? Now, the derivatives of like inverse trig stuff is new to calculus this year. So, unfortunately, there's no multiple choice questions in here that involve derivatives of arc sine, arc cosine, arc tangent. That will be on tomorrow's test. Make sure you know those. Pretty good? All right, so you guys have about two minutes left. Pick the smart thing to do. Spend some time working on these. Get as many as you can get done. You've got a minute and a half. I mean, for Steven, that's enough for what? Like 14 problems? <laughs> Good. Good. Don't, don't pack up. Don't let Giselle pack up. Giselle. Just don't, don't pack up. <laughs> Mrs. Mejia will be talking about this later. <laughs> okay. I love speed dating. It's like what my house would look like if I had 11 teenagers over for dinner. <laughs> Not yet. Not yet. No, Thanksgiving, I'll be thankful not to see you. No. You'll see the other channel of us. There have been times I've invited everybody over for a barbecue. All right.